let us look at interactive example generation and validation and using them in a service virtualization server with API specifications. So I have an open API specification here, which has several operations, including find available products, orders, create and get, and of course products to create them. So here's this API specification, and it does not have any inline examples at this moment, which I can use for stub data. Let me go ahead and create them. So for that purpose, I'm going to run Specmatic Interactive Examples for this API spec. So let me quickly do that. I run the command and the interactive example UI is loaded up in this particular URL. And as you can see, you will see the exact same operations that I showed you a little while earlier on the API specifications. We've been able to take that and map it to this UI. Now, clearly the examples are missing, so it is asking me to generate it. So let me quickly generate. Let's also view the example. And you will see that the example is exactly in line with the API specification for the find available products and the query parameter, the header, and the response body. So now let me hit validate. And it is surely valid because we just generated it off the API specification. We haven't made any changes. But usually, as developers, we'd like to make changes to the stub data so that we can make it useful to our scenario that we're testing or building applications off. Let me quickly go ahead and edit this file which just got generated here under my underscore examples folder. This is the one which you were seeing on the UI. I'll go here and uh, maybe this page size doesn't make sense for me. So I'll go ahead and say 10. And also the values that I'm seeing here are pertaining to an iPhone or some sort of a phone. So let me instead make the type of phone. Once I do that, I hit save, I made the changes. And then I'll go back just to be sure before I use this as stub data and hit validate example. Oh, and it looks like I made a mistake. So let me open it. It clearly says the specification expected only these many possible values for the query parameter type. It's a enum, but I have given phone, so it's throwing an error that my example is not in line with the API specification. This is really, really important feedback for me because something that would have completely slipped through the cracks, I've already got early feedback at this point. So let's actually double check on the API specification also. And you'll notice that for find available products, it's indeed an enum and it only allows these possible values. So let me go ahead and update this to catch it. Save that. And uh, if I go back to my UI, I validate the example screen. So now I think I'm good to start using this as a stub server. Let me quickly go over to my readme file. I have this handy command to start the stub server. As you can see, again, I'm only passing the API specification to Specmatic. And it already knows that the examples have been generated under this folder called underscore examples. So I'll pick it up. So let me quickly do that. And uh, it's already launched. So let me go to Postman and I'll fire the request. So the exact values that we had set up there is what we get back from the Postman. Now you may be wondering that in Postman also, you see that the response values contain some meaningful information for the name and all, right? Now, how did Specmatic come to know what is the values for these fields? It is only a string and the open API specification did not have any details in there. So that is when you remember when I ran the example generation, I'd already passed it a file called dictionary JSON. Now the dictionary JSON, I had actually provided meaningful information in the context of my domain. So that Specmatic has clues to look this up and thereby based on which the example is generated. And that is what is served as a stub response. My stub responses are actually meaningful. Now I already have stub response coming through. Uh, can I do anything more with this example? Well, if I can use this example for stub data, can I also use it for test data? We certainly can. Let me kill the stub server here. And uh, I already have an application running here. It's a Spring Boot application, which is supposed to be implementing that particular uh, API spec that we are looking at uh, for some time now. So I am going to go back to my readme and this time, I'm only changing one single aspect of the command. Instead of stub, I'm saying test. And of course, I have to give it the port number so that Specmatic knows where to hit the application in order to test it. And what 
we expect to see now is the exact same file that we use to find available products, the get underscore 200 JSON file, which we created. That is the one which is, should be used to test the application also. Let's actually run this test. And you see a bunch of tests were run and a few failures. So let's look at uh, and understand what just happened. And Specmatic gives you this interactive uh, UI, uh, a drill down HTML report, which I can launch here again. And you'll see that all the endpoints have been tested. Of course, for the endpoints where we have generated examples, which is the find available products, the example that is used to run the test will be the one that we created. And as you can see, it is the same. Page size is 10 and uh, you will see the response is coming back. And that response will be validated against the schema in the API specification. The rest of the tests that you saw, they are plainly generated off of the data types. We can figure out the values and send those information based on dictionary or purely based on the data type itself. Now that's a quick demo about using your API specifications to generate examples interactively. And then uh, further from there, using those examples as both stub data and test data itself. Thank <laughs> you.